pushed it back a day, maybe because of some logistical problems and printing an 800-page report. But I think probably they didn't want to step on the Ukrainian president's <laughs> yeah. headlines. I, think I don't think there was a printer print issue. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I heard the printer issue. I think they can print docs on Capitol Hill. I've seen it. The committee did release, though, some new information yesterday, mm -hmm. a batch of transcripts of 34 witnesses who repeatedly took the Fifth Amendment while testifying before the panel. Here's some of the notable names on the list who answered few or no questions at all. John Eastman, he cited how ironic his Fifth Amendment right 155 times. Hirschman said, get yourself a good criminal lawyer. Yeah, he needed one. And that's what Hirschman told him. He's, of course, a Trump lawyer, uh, Eastman is, that the committee is called the mastermind behind the fake electors plot. Also, Trump advisor Roger Stone responded uh, with the fifth more than 70 times. White nationalist Nick Fuentes, former national security advisor Michael Flynn, and bankrupt conspiracy theorist Alex Jones also pled the fifth. The panel also questioned leaders of the far-right militia groups, the Oath Keepers, and the Proud Boys, but both used the Fifth Amendment. Uh, it's very fascinating, Jen, because if we go back and we see what Donald Trump always said about the Fifth mm -hmm. Amendment. Yeah, kind of harsh. Do, Alex, do we have those? Do we have that clip of? Let, let's 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 listen to Donald Trump in his own words. Mm -hmm. Taking the fifth, I think it's disgraceful. What happened? He pleaded the fifth, right? He pleaded the fifth. Fifth Amendment. Bob. Fifth Amendment. Fifth Amendment. Fifth Amendment. Horrible. Horrible. The mob takes the fifth. If you're innocent, why are you taking the Fifth Amendment? Let's see here. I have disgraceful. <laughs> he said it's disgraceful, horrible, horrible. And the mob takes the fifth. Uh, Jen, as our good friend John Heilman always says, whenever Trump talks, it's either projection our confession. I'm not sure which one it is here, but <laughs> yeah. it doesn't look good uh, for him or uh, his his band of of insurrectionists. Yeah, he must have been so disgusted reading these transcripts, Joe. I mean, I'm just kidding, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, look, I think reading through these transcripts, what was also what was more interesting probably than the answers, which was a lot of versions of the pleading the fifth, but were the questions and when they pleaded the fifth, not just in in response to questions like how old are you or where did you go to school, which they many pleaded the fifth to, but also questions like Roger Stone was asked about whether what he thought of coups taking over government. And he said, I plead the fifth. Uh, you know, um, uh, Michael, uh, uh, others were asked about the rule of law and whether they think the rule of law should be a part of what we respect in the United States. They pleaded the fifth. So there's there's a lot to unpack here, but the questions and the refusal to answer not just basic information, but information about who we are as a country is also quite telling in terms of who these characters are uh, whose transcripts were released last night. Boy, I keep going back to a lot of the questions that Liz Cheney asked Michael Flynn, uh, the, the former general. Yes, and Michael it's Flynn, remarkable. yes. It's remarkable what he pled the fifth to, just the yes. most basic American values and virtues he pled the fifth to. Um, you know, John Heilman, uh, I always found in politics that the most powerful political ads you could, you could ever put out there were just simply putting the quotes of your opponent, letting them sit right. on the page of, uh, of, uh, with a lot of white space around it. The, it's the most powerful thing. Prosecutors always find the most powerful words to use uh, against uh, somebody that's been indicted, their own words. Let those words hang out there. This has happened time and again to Donald Trump. This January 6th committee, I suspect any future indictments that come forward, they will be indictments, um, legal or political, that come um, because of... of words that not only Donald Trump said himself, but his closer advisors uh, said, or as we saw throughout the entire January 6th process, uh, the words and the testimony of his former staffers. Donald Trump, if in fact 
if he gets indicted and convicted, he will be indicted and convicted because of his words, the words of his family members, the words of his closest advisors, and the words of his former White House aides. Is that not fitting? Oh, oh, so fitting, Joe. So fitting. And, you know, uh, I, I've heard you many times over these many years that this program has been on the air, uh, now stretching into the six or seven hours a day, you know, refer to yourself as a simple country lawyer. Um, simple. And, um, you know, in the same vein, in, in, yeah, simple is the key word there. I'm a simple, I'm a simple beat reporter. You know, the thing about, about Donald Trump and his thing about the invocation about how the fifth, you know, the guys in the mob take the fifth, there's got to be something bad about taking the fifth. I mean, I hate to say it, the guy's not wrong. I mean, in one sense, I mean, we understand the constitutional right to to not incriminate yourself. That is a important and hallowed part of the Constitution that we both support. But, you know, when you see people who were involved, uh, are proximate to, sometimes neck deep in, plotting uh, a coup against the United States government in the middle of an insurrection, uh, pleading the fifth over and over and over again to such questions as the ones that Jen Psaki was talking about, you know, Okay, you're, you're, you're right. You can't be caused to incriminate yourself on those fronts, but it does look good. I mean, that's those those are people who who, who you know uh, where honesty they know would hang them uh, in the eyes of a court. And 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 so Trump. I mean, I hate to give him credit here, but like at the gut level, I think a lot of people. It's why we don't why we allow in civil cases we allow uh, people taking the fifth. Uh, to be used in a dispositive way against against people. I think, you know, it's a very powerful thing, uh, especially in the context of the fact that, and one of the one of the most, I think, powerful things the, the January 6th committee did, and it will be remembered for, is punch, punching a hole in the notion that it's a kangaroo court, that it's a partisan witch hunt, by only putting on the stand over and over again, Republicans, Republican, Republican, Republican. There are no Democratic hack mm -hmm. partisan witnesses in this thing. It was Republican after Republican, Trump loyalist after Trump loyalist, people who served Trump, who were inside the White House serving Trump to the bitter end, when many other people had left the White House long before. These people stuck with Trump to the end. And those people then, and some of the wider uh, assortment of his, of his uh, co-conspiracists, uh, were the ones that ended up taking the fifth. And I, I, I got to say, you know, we'll see what the Department of Justice does. We'll see what this report has in it today. Uh, there, I'm sure there will be things mm -hmm. in it that we will want to comment on as the day goes by. Uh, but I have to say, what well, I think in the end here, we're going to have a very compelling uh, legal and more important kind of common sense case where the framework of what it is that Trump did wrong and what it is that Trump must be held accountable for is laid out for all to see. And as you said, the words in black and white on the page speak loudest. Uh, and the words of Trump's associates yeah. speaks even louder than that. And boy, it's going to be hard for the DOJ to look away. From Trump's own people. And that really is, Elise, the brilliance of Benny Thompson. Not only did he use Trump's people in setting up the testimony against Trump, he had Liz Cheney. Mm -hmm. The conservative's conservative, a conservative that had a higher ACU rating than anybody else. Benny Thompson repeatedly put her out front to show just how bipartisan this January 6th committee was. Uh, and the impact has just been devastating to Donald Trump. And it's probably a good reason why 20 million people watched the opening and millions have, have watched other hearings and why so many people went out and voted saying that democracy in the midterms was for, uh, in the forefront of their minds. Joe, Liz Cheney has received, and rightfully so, a lot of praise for her role on the January 6th committee and her bravery. But Congressman Thompson also deserves praise for putting Incredible. country over self and checking. He just didn't have any of the ego that so many congressional members have when they are presented with a microphone and a large stage. I am curious, though, what's going to happen now with those congressmen who chose not to show up and speak to the committee and they didn't respond to subpoenas. You've got four Republican members, including Kevin McCarthy and Jim Jordan, that have been referred to the Ethics Committee. So how does that play mm -hmm. out now? At least those who were interviewed gave the fifth, but those members didn't even show up. Yeah, and what an incredible cell phone. One more cell phone by Republicans. It's getting boring by now. 
The, the very people who are going to be trying to issue subpoenas over the next couple of years, the very people running the U.S. House of Representatives are going to be Republicans who ignored congressional subpoenas. Mm. Good luck with getting anybody to respond to your subpoenas over the next two years.